Christ, can you imagine pausing WWE now and adding even an extra second to Monday Night Raw? The entire promotion is on pause, or at least that seems to be the excuse for the deadening standstill of endless rematches and prolonged feuds. There are, however, some moments in WWE's abysmal recent history that warrant photographic scrutiny, purely to double-check the sheer extent to which they were abysmal. With that in mind, I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture, and these are the 10 most paused WWE moments. Number 10, the DX Flasher. All right, full disclosure right now, certain moments you perverts definitely paused are going to be omitted here. WWE's history of teenage boy or Kevin Dunn wank fodder yields several lists of 10, in fact. Back in the fabled day, the company entered a late night phase that destroyed many a JVC 180. They won't be recounted here in depth, but for the sake of accuracy, yes, the merest hint of a titty compelled you to grab the remote. Picture the scene. You're hormonal, you're watching the Fed in 1998 after putting down the N64 controller. Holy crap, you say, with blind by corn blaring in the background. You see what appears to be a bulb. Triple H, the man who later restored the dignity of women across the globe by pushing a few of them as athletes, is imploring a fired up woman in the crowd to get them out for the lads. Some of you grew up, others are pausing raw to this day because you're sick enough to treat Alexa Bliss as a sex object. Number 9. The Hell in a Cell 2019 Main Event Finish What happened? Why did it happen? And how little sense did it actually make? Those were the questions bubbling through the incensed and baffled minds of WWE fans watching the absolute bloody disaster that was Hell in a Cell's 2019's main event finish. The finish wasn't the only problem. The idiotic finish was, though, rendered even more idiotic by a spot planted earlier in the match. Bray Wyatt threatens to use a mallet? (laughs) Go nuts, pal. Seth Rollins threatens to use a sledgehammer? Come on, guy. That's too far. What was the difference? Did the referee simply surmise that one looked too comical to actually have an effect? Number 8. Mick Foley narrowly avoids death. The initial fall was the more iconic, shocking moment. Mick Foley's attempt to maintain the aura of the Hell in a Cell gimmick was a controversial and hugely ironic shortcut. Knowing that he stood no chance of besting Shawn Michaels' world-class performance as the most athletic horror villain victim ever, his pride compelled him to take the most unhinged bump in the history of mainstream wrestling. It was so divisive that the quality of the bump, understandably, never gets talked about enough that he nailed the landing on his upper back and still endured horrific damage acts as robust proof that it was a terrible idea. But no single wrestler has ever created such a dramatic standstill. The second bump was worse because the cage roof could not support the planned safer bump of Foley clutching at the hanging chain link before, after dreadful suspense, hurtling to a worked doom. Actual doom awaited him because the old structure was so flimsy and he plummeted back first on the old WWF ring that was often and variously described as bumping on concrete. The concrete, though, was not the only source of horror. A chair followed Foley on his descent and the leg came horrifyingly close to impaling him. It was unforgettable in itself, more so because it was paused and rewatched so often. Number 7. CM Punk Can't Suppress His Fury CM Punk isn't shy of expressing his opinion of WWE's televised output in 2021, and he wasn't shy in 2012 either when he was actually on the show and led it as WWE Champion. On December 3rd, he described the three-hour Monday Night Raw shows as dismal in a shocking line that doesn't get discussed discussed enough. What does get discussed and was paused for its sheer, did he just sodding do that lol quality, was the time he twatted a fan. In the build towards Hell in a Cell, Punk scarpered into the crowd as Mr. McMahon barked orders at him. He had a choice. He could either fight Ryback or John Cena. He chose option C a fan. He was getting shoved and touched in all directions and the fan directly behind him wasn't the only aggressor but he did very unnecessarily clip the back of Punk's head when putting his glasses back on. Paused several times over to determine just which wrestling fan got too close for comfort. The answer is predictably all of them. 
Number six, Rey Mysterio loses an eye at Extreme Rules 2020. Seth Rollins criticised fans for criticising this incredibly. Well, not so incredible. He's delivered more bad takes than good matches since 2019. But the idea that wrestling fans are just now starting to complain is an absolutely bollocks and inaccurate take. People weren't watching Godfather vs. Midian in a state of euphoria, for Christ's sake. The horror show stipulation, though, was a hook. You have to give them that. You weren't not interested. A hook, incidentally, might have acted as a more convincing extraction device as opposed to a blunt metal edge. But anyway, after a match comprised of very exciting and creative action that well, didn't matter at all, Seth somehow removed Ray's eye and didn't squish it into ooze. It's out, Samoa Joe said. It was a deeply unconvincing eye prop, which is never mentioned by these carnies as the source of complaints. Doing horror movie bollocks is only bollocks to some. If it looked halfway realistic, then maybe the conversation would be different. But it looked as fake as balls, and so it was buried mercilessly. Did it really look that crap, fans asked, pausing the scene to see if they'd actually painted a half a cue ball pink and passed it off as a prop. Yeah, they had. Number five, Randy Orton says what at Backlash 2020. WWE in 2020 was a fever dream in general, one so inexplicable and squirmy that it was at once worthy of the pause and horrifying enough to make you want to wake up in a cold sweat and forget the torment that was Shane McMahon yelling that Raw Underground was sick. WWE was so inexplicable that they promised the greatest wrestling match ever and didn't actually make a fool of themselves in doing so. It was a great and quintessentially WWE match in its pacing. So good that it almost rendered the company timeless more than woefully unfashionable. And Orton articulated the intensity by threatening to outright murder his opponent. Apologies in advance, whoever's editing this. I'm going to f***ing kill you, mother he said after blasting Edge with a backdrop on the commentary table. What? Pause. Double check. Yep. He definitely said that. But isn't WWE the Wonderland children can escape into to hide away from the evils of AEW's gory crap? Number four. Hardcore Holly says the word, well, you can see it, I can't say it out loud, obviously, at WrestleMania 2000. Some context here. The ending to the Hardcore title battle royal was botched horrendously, and Hardcore Holly was not meant to emerge as the champion. An already cranky, miserable, and intimidating man in his resting state, please don't hurt me, was even more pissed than usual and was unprepared to provide some post-match comments. The more Holly got in his own way, the more he realised that a much more puny, innocent man stood in his way, Cole. He projected his failings onto him at the end of a bitter rant, punching down is not good. It breaks the rule of comedy. But Cole is more of a cyborg soundboard than a man made of flesh, so yeah, he doesn't count. Number three, Kevin Owens headbutts Vince McMahon. This was a wild and ill-advised move for anybody to take, much less a frail-looking Vince McMahon, particularly because it wasn't a move. He ate a shoot headbutt straight to his cobwebbed dome mere months after Katsuyori Shibata was forced to retire if we're still doing the whole bad faith WWE is safe actually bit. A threatened firing countered a threatened lawsuit to lead to the grisly scene, which was ultimately a chapter in the first of two bloody Kevin Owens versus Shane McMahon programs. Owens tricked McMahon into the strike and when burst through his forehead an internal bruise immediately formed underneath it. The shock warranted the playback in itself but the preceding moments were paused to check if Vince had subtly opened himself up beforehand to make this very slightly less reckless than it looked. Number 2. Brock Lesnar's Shooting Star Press yeah, no prizes for guessing this was going to feature on the list. Just a few inches short of one of the greatest moments in the history of professional wrestling. Instead, Brock Lesnar was millimetres away from ending his career in what is the best possible outcome of a near disaster. WWE was in woeful decline in 2003, a worrying trend obscured by the fantastic WrestleMania 19. Well ahead of an incredible show, WWE had preserved an iconic mega pop by withholding a reality-defying super finisher. Brock Lesnar was such a freakishly gifted athletic specimen that his colossal frame was actually capable 
of executing the shooting star press and WWE decline or no, still had the sense to really make it matter. At the crescendo of a match, as physical as it was admirable, Lesnar scaled the ropes. Instantly, the dread kicked in. Angle looked to be inches away from even a splash, much less the shooting star with its acute rotation. The sheer tone of Taz's voice still inspires terror. There is a lot in his voice. Excitement, disbelief, sheer panic. The ghoulish among you have most certainly paused this near disaster to learn just how close Lesnar came. Number one, The Fiend is distracted at WrestleMania 37. If The Fiend continues to not feature on programming, WWE will have stumbled arse backwards into quite the hilarious implication. The last time he was out this long, it was, yeah, rather understandable. He had been immolated to death. This time, the demonic, selectively invincible entity has been out for nearly two months at time of recording, and he was banished to whence he came by a draping DDT and an RKO. The reality is different, of course. Creative has nothing for The Fiend, which is absurd. But from a storyline perspective, fire equals pretty much RKO. At WrestleMania 37, The Fiend huh, lost via distraction. The whole bizarre scene registered as something that a scorned fan would tweet to take the piss. The Fiend jobs via distraction. It's wild, even from the most cynical of perspectives, Michael Sidgwick, that this actually happened. And yet it did. Alexa Bliss bled black goo from her scalp. The Fiend looked on in puzzlement that she'd turned on him, and he did the job clean in the bloody middle. The Fiend will join in bloody promo trains and guest on Ms. TV next. Then perhaps he'll get his heat back by rolling up Akira Tozawa or whoever the hell the 24-7 champion is now. And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Let us know in the comments section below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And subscribe to What Culture Wrestling on either iTunes, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts from, for daily wrestling podcasts. Plus, you can let us know your thoughts on Twitter at WhatCultureWWE. And you can find me there at Adam Wilborn. Thanks for watching. I've been Adam from What Culture, and I'll see you soon.